Next question, Chaim. How can a small Noahide family that's homeschooled and not allowed to have worldly friends deal with not having, not having kosher friends to spend time with for their two young daughters? The difficulty that newly religious parents have uh, understanding is that whether they're newly religious as Jewish or they're newly religious as uh, non-Jews, but uh, let's say uh, Noahides, and they want to bring their kids along with them. The problem is that when the parents do their tshuva and they repent and they start, uh, you know, adhering to the Torah and complying with it, taking everything on, they're excited about it, and they're also aware of the dangers that are out there and therefore they try to eliminate or at the very least limit the danger from the you know outer world well, you know whether it be uh, bad friends or family and uh, other types of uh, influences that could hurt now they think that because they're doing it their kids should have an easy time doing it also because they figure that uh, listen i know what's out there I know that most people are not good for me. I'm not going to hang out with them. I don't need any friends anyway. Why? Because I have my family. I got my kids. I got my spouse. I got uh, this. I don't need all these outside friends unless they are in line with my ideology, unless they're an addition to my life. But if they are one of those spiritual nightmares that you don't want to add to your life where they pretty much all they talk about are things against Hashem and all they behave is against Hashem, you don't want that in your life. So unless they have the same ideology as you, you don't want them in your life. Now, as an adult, this is very easy to understand because you know the risk. The problem is that most of these adults think that the kids also understand that. And that's a problem. Why? Because the kid doesn't understand that. He doesn't understand. She doesn't understand why you won't let her hang out with the next door neighbor why you won't let her hang out with uh you know somebody from uh you know from down the street or perhaps a family member you know because she doesn't understand the problem with immodesty she doesn't understand the problem with immorality you don't understand all those things so she's a very young kid and i'm talking about really young kids five six seven years old so it's a problem for her to uh, to agree to this Unless you are going to make her a very active life where you're constantly playing with her, you're constantly learning with her, you're constantly giving, unless in essence, you become her friend. But believe it or not, even that is not enough for many kids. Many kids need to socialize with others. So you have to give them somebody else. You have to give them brothers and sisters. Uh, and, uh, you know, you have to hopefully try to find uh, other people that are like-minded that also have kids, which means you most likely will have to move to a different community. Because to keep the kids secluded, uh, secluded from the outside world is going to be very, very difficult, especially as they grow up. Uh, it's going to be very difficult because kids don't know why it's not good to hang out with all these other kids. They don't understand it. And you can explain it until you're blue in the face. It's hard for them to understand why there's such a problem. Uh, because they don't understand immorality and all that other garbage and real filth that's out there. And other than that, they also need to socialize much more than perhaps adults do. You know, adults uh, like me, for example, uh, I've already socialized enough in my life that if I don't ever see another person other than my own family ever again, it won't necessarily change my life very much. In fact, it may even be preferable sometimes. Uh, no offense to all the wonderful students that I have, but again, what I'm trying to say is that I don't need friends. I have my books. I have my family. That's it. I've already done my share of socializing. I was never exactly such Mr. Social anyway, but the point is that I don't have that need that a lot of people have perhaps to have friends come over and, and all that stuff. I don't do it. It's, I never have and even more so, even less so as I've gotten older. But when I was younger, I wanted to have friends. I wanted to go play with other kids. I wanted to do other stuff. Why? Because younger kids have the need to socialize much more. So what smart parents need to do is they need to make their kids' life as easy as possible 
in order for them to love the religion, love the Torah, but without losing them. Meaning that you can't just, you know, force feed the Torah down the kid's throat and tell them, listen, nobody's good in the world, everybody's evil, you're just going to stay home in these four walls and you're never going to leave. That's not going to work out so well because eventually they're going to leave. Eventually they're going to leave and they're most likely going to rebel. So you have to make their life as easy as possible. What does that mean, easy? You, first of all, have to socialize with them. You know, if, if, if you don't socialize with them, if you're a busy mom, you're a busy dad, you don't socialize with them, you're going to lose those kids. You're going to lose those kids. They're, they're not, uh, you know, they need somebody. Two, you have to give them as many siblings as possible, meaning your financial situation should never stop you from having more kids, even more so if you want to have good kids. Why? Because your kids, you want them to stay this way, you need to give them friends. And so that means you have to produce them. If you don't want to go and move to a different neighborhood, you have to produce more kids. You have to give them brothers and sisters to play with. Uh, but that doesn't alleviate your necessity of actually socializing with them yourself and being, your, you know, being there with them. So you have to constantly be, be with them. You have to constantly uh, bring more children to the world uh, to, to give them somebody to, to, to hang out with, to play with, and so on and so forth. But you're also going to have to, at some point, introduce them to somebody that's in the outside world that is allowed for them to hang out with. You don't need, you don't need to introduce them to 500 people. You can introduce them to one family, one person, two people uh, that they can't hang out with. Why? Because, again, people, for the most part, are a lot more social than, let's say, somebody like myself. Okay? So they want to talk to somebody else, not just their brother or sister, not just their parents. They want to talk to somebody else. So if you're going to, if you want to keep these kids close to the Torah, you have to allow them to live somewhat normal lives. But again, under supervision you don't just let them hang out with just anybody you have to pick and choose whoever they're going to hang out with very carefully and whoever they're not going to hang out with you have to explain to them as many times as it takes without getting frustrated or mad why they can't hang out with those people you tell them look we're religious we're modest the people next door or the people over there they pray to an idol they walk around like as if they don't have clothes and so on you have to tell them they're doing things that are wrong and and we're we're not uh uh that's not in line with our life and again the more you explain to them patiently the more they'll accept it and perhaps even enjoy it and uh, and uh, and love it but if you seclude them to uh too much they'll rebel and you have to be very very careful with that like if you're an extremely busy parent you have to move to a community that has other busy parents, but also religious kids. Like, you can't be a busy parent, an absentee parent, and also expect your kids to be secluded in your own life and pretty much uh, expect them to come out uh, righteous. It's not going to work out so well. You have to give them a chance. And again, you have to, it has, everything that you do has to have a lot of education, a lot of education, a lot of learning. You have to explain to them why we do everything that we do. You can't just assume that they'll understand. You can't just assume that you need to explain only one time. Uh, you can't just assume they accept everything. You have to allow them to ask questions. You have to show them why things are not allowed. Uh, not just say not allowed and expect them to just accept it as if uh, King is saying it. You have to show them how, you know, how to deal with the Yetzirah, meaning that, look, this is not allowed. So, yeah, some people will say, oh, no, kitchen, you know, people should never have phones these smartphones are the devil they're the worst yeah you're right there's a lot of problems with smartphones a lot of problems with computers a lot of problems with a lot of things but to just simply act as if there's no computers in the world and there's no phones in the world it's not the right approach why because that kid is eventually going to grow up and can make his own choices as an adult and he's going to choose to have a phone and have a computer so unless you teach that kid what's allowed and what's forbidden in the computer what's allowed and what's forbidden in the phone he's not going to know and it's going to be too late so you have to tell him listen phone we're only allowed to use it once we're adults or once we have supervision and only to specific places bezat hashem app always allowed the uh, youtube only under supervision a uh bezat hashem.org always perfect a uh cnn not allowed uh <laughs> And so on and so on, you have to teach them what's allowed, what's not allowed. 
and you have to supervise them and it's a lot of babysitting and it's a lot of supervision but that's what it takes that's what it takes it's a uh, it's not an easy thing but you have to teach them what's right and wrong to just simply eliminate things is not the right approach i see sometimes that people uh make silly uh silly things they lived their whole life like a secular person and uh one day they did chuva but they go to the extreme they go to a complete extreme what do they do they uh listen they say listen okay i'm gonna do chuva. i'm gonna keep shabbat okay that's it i'm not gonna have a phone anymore i'm gonna have a phone from 1942 just has numbers no text messaging no video no nothing okay that's not necessarily a bad thing oh i'm also not gonna have a computer okay so how are you going to communicate with people i mean today computers are like th- electricity no no i'm only going to use the one that's at any office okay fine you can handle it fine oh i'm not gonna have a phone i'm not gonna have a computer and no you know what i'm also not gonna have uh, a lot of other things that other people okay fine now if you can handle all of that and you've gradually built yourself up to that fine that's not a problem if you can handle it, if your rabbi said that's what that's good for you no problem if your business doesn't require you to to have a normal phone that's uh has text messaging and so on and no problem but if you're just leaping to that overnight and thinking that you're going to become a bia kiva overnight just because you don't have a smartphone it's a mistake it's a mistake it's better that you learn how to cope with your yetzerah and use the technology that's available today under control than to simply eliminate it from your life and assume that that's going to work out for you uh you know to just eliminate things from your life in my opinion from my experience is not a good way to do you have to learn how to control yourself you have a computer but you know there are certain things that are forbidden if you can't control yourself to that point forget about not having a phone you should put yourself in a cage if you can't control yourself from going to certain websites or from going to certain places and you have to you have to get a control of yourself i mean it's it's ridiculous that people say no no as soon as i have a phone i have to sin you have to put yourself in a cage buddy i mean you have to seriously get control of yourself because not having a phone is not going to help that why because somebody that's really sick to that extent even if he doesn't have a phone he'll find some other way i have some people that they did this they said no no i'm no longer gonna have a phone i'm no longer gonna have whatsapp i'm no longer gonna have facebook i'm no longer gonna have anything I'm gonna be I'll be Akiva. And what do they do? They still send me messages from stranger people's phones. Hey Rabbi, it's Steve. How are you? I'm like, ooh, Steve. Wow, you changed your number again for 87 times. No, no, no. It's just some guy that I met in the street and I asked him to borrow the phone. I wanted to send you a message. Like they just borrow random people's phones and they just act weird. This is completely ridiculous. Ridiculous. Person needs to learn how to control themselves. As a parent, you need to teach your kids how to control themselves what's allowed what's not allowed that's the most valuable lesson